Wow, uh, this is brilliant and beautiful and sad on so many levels. And I think this is one of the most important math scenes in the whole cinema. Hi there, my name is Vladislav Radak. I'm writer and mathematician, and this is Fabric of Life, a show where we try to fuse art and science to answer the world's most compelling questions. We have a weekly show here, but today's special is a little bit different, because there is no better fusing art and science than actually seeing mathematics in movies. And I know what you're going to tell me. Well, GQ has this really popular show where they call certain specialists from different fields to break down certain movie scenes. And you wouldn't be wrong, but to my surprise, they never called mathematician to answer or to break down really important or classical scenes from cinema history about mathematics. And we all know audience loves mathematics in movies. When it comes to biography movies or fictional ones, everybody likes a good genius. And now it comes as a surprise to me that GQ didn't do this about mathematics. Like they don't have the contact of a person who knows mathematics and teaches at university or uh, somebody who has a deep understanding and knowledge of the world's cinema and Hollywood industry. And also some mathematician who won certain film prizes as a movie director. Okay, okay, I, I know enough bragging. I need to take matter in my own hands and do this by myself. I will break down some of the most memorable movie scenes from the history and see how true to life they actually are, in this case life being mathematics, which is life to me, and see if there are any hidden mistakes there. Let me take you on an adventure. Okay, the first movie we're actually going to analyze is not movie per se, but it's actually a TV show. Apparently a popular TV show that I didn't watch because I'm maybe too old. And uh, script writers say to me that this is a kids show called iCarly. Uh, season 2, episode 19 from 2007. And this happens. Anyway, since you've got your big test on Monday, we should go over the new international math laws that were just passed by the... You in. <laughs> International math laws? Uh-huh. They made some changes, so we gotta make sure you understand all the new rules. Now, the biggest news is they've created a new number. A new number? Yep. Between five and six. It's called DERF. <laughs> DERF. Right. And it looks like this. <laughs> That's a DERF. See? Now, I, I love this scene, I need to admit. And for one particular reason, uh, you see, when it comes to mathematics, we adults or teachers are lying to kids all the time, especially about the numbers. When you're particularly young, we say to you, there are, you know, numbers one, two, three, four, five, and then we try to teach you numbers all the way to 10, because this is how many fingers you have. But then we say, okay, there are a little bit more numbers, 11, etc. Uh, but then we introduce the zero and this comes as a shock because that means that you have nothing and then you actually, you know, start to become an adult because the next thing is we say we lied to you. Those are not the only numbers. There are numbers below the zero. This is minus. This is when you own some people money and then, you know, you need to be a little bit older for that because we want to say you, you know, pay up a little bit, you owe me some money. Um, but then we say, okay, we lie, those are not only numbers, not only negative zeros and ones, but also rational numbers, irrational numbers, transcendental numbers, and then after that complex number and complex numbers or even hyper-complex numbers, we lie all the time. We always say, okay, this is it, but then the next year or a couple of years after, we introduce even more numbers. And this is funny, of course, this uh, particular number from iCarly doesn't exist, but not only that, you know, there is number between four and five, but there is actually infinity of numbers between four and five. I know. Now, the next movie is called 21, and it is interesting story about a couple of death-ridden students from Massachusetts Institute of Technology 
who actually learn from their professor how to count little bit cards and do a little bit of probability theory tricks and they go to Las Vegas to try to win some money and relieve themselves of uh, financial troubles. But first we need to check the math. Oh well, please, we had a total of 76 cards that came out of the deck. 23 were high cards with a value of minus one. 17 were neutral with no value at all and the rest were low cards with a value of plus one. How could you lose the count? Plus 13. The count. Plus 13. Yes. Now what I really like particularly about this very movie is uh, apparently it's like really interesting one and Kevin Spacey is brilliant that is also covering a lot of great mathematical topics in very detail and all mathematics here is accurate and the professor in this movie mentions a couple of important uh, probability theory examples like Monty Hall problem that maybe we can discuss in a further detail in some of the next episodes of this show but also says something about Newton Rapson method that is like super interesting now who can explain Newton's method and how you use it uh, you can use it to solve nonlinear equations that's impressive and also when it comes uh, to counting cards and probability theory behind that, this one is very accurate. And not that it's also accurate, it's actually really based on a book from one math professor from MIT, Edward O. Torp, I who invented uh, this theory of counting cards in the 60s and tried it for himself. And this theory is actually not really complex and if you follow this movie, you can actually figure it out for yourself. Basically, it's all about not really counting cards or memorizing cards on the table, it's really about adding ones or subtracting ones uh, when you have, uh, uh, for example, a lot of high cards. The way that blackjack is played in casinos is um, you really think about um, cards of higher values, for example, nine, tens, and whatever, uh, those face cards. And then, then basically, if you have if you think you have more uh, of those uh, uh, higher cards in a deck, then you subtract one from your equation. And if you play for like a really long time, and if you really focus, you can have um, odds on your side. And after like a relatively long time of, of focus playing, you can definitely earn some serious money. And this math professor from 60s and later some of his students proved that. Now you're going to ask me why we don't go to casino now and why we don't use the same technique. Well, uh, counting cards is forbidden and what you need to know about casinos, if you know a little bit about mathematics, is that house always needs to win. As you can imagine, casinos are really loud places and there's so many disturbances and there are so many noises and you need to be... Um, ridiculously focused for hours if not even for days to start getting odds in your favor um, that is also not really easy when you have cameras pointing at you and a lot of people sitting behind those cameras and actually watching if somebody uh, seems like he's counting cards or doing this complex um, algebra in their head and then you will probably have like two buff guys escorting you from Vegas like that happens exactly in this movie. Long story short, if you want to um, earn some money uh, using mathematics, you are not going to do that in casino but rather in some financial institutions. More on that on some next episodes. Now, the next movie is absolutely fan favorite. Uh, it starts late brilliant Robin Williams as a math professor and Matt Damon and Ben Affleck as mathematical prodigy and his good friend. It actually won Matt Damon and Ben Affleck um, Oscar or Academy Award for a breast screenplay and I rest my case. This is really good movie and I take it always super emotional and why I really particularly like this movie. It shows uh, that um, math prodigies or you know talented people for math are hiding everywhere and not only in university halls of, of some reputable universities. Um, now we need to speak a little bit about uh, mathematics in this, but first let's take a look at some scenes. I also put an advanced Fourier system on the main hallway chalkboard. And I'm hoping that one of you might prove it by the end of the semester. And the person to do so will not only be in my good graces, but also go on to fame and fortune. 
by having their accomplishment recorded and their name printed in the auspicious MIT Tech. Former winners include Nobel laureates, Fields Medal winners, renowned astrophysicists, and lowly MIT professors. <laughs> well, that's all. If you have any questions, I'm sure that Tom has the answers. This is correct. Who did this? Jack? It wasn't me. Nimish? <laughs> no way. Sorry. Wow. Now let me get straight to the point here. The math in this movie is really absolutely correct. And that is not that surprising because another MIT professor was consulting on this movie. His name is uh, Daniel uh, Kleitman and I think he did a pretty good job. Now this movie is criticized online by some mathematicians saying that uh, two problems that are given in this movie that uh, Will Hunting was able to solve are too simple. And I agree with that a little bit, but you see, especially when it comes to the um, to the second problem where you need to find homographically reducible trees of size of 10. This is actually part of the graph theory and what I like that they use the graph theory is because it's really um, a field of the math that is um, camera friendly and everybody likes to see that and it's easy for um, average audience to understand it. Now this problem is relatively simple and what mathematicians are criticizing is because this professor says like okay nobody was able to solve this and my you know it took um, my colleagues and me two years to solve that this is not the case. Um, those problems were need to you know combine in nodes and branches uh, in certain shapes and not have like a you know cycles or circles stuff like that. This particular problem has 10 different solutions and you can probably, if you know and understand the rules of the graph theory, you can do and find at least five of them by yourself without any prior knowledge of mathematics. But it doesn't really matter because I think it's, it's a great storyline and I think it really works here. And I'm also loving it when Matt Damon solves it as a, as a janitor, obviously, uh, didn't have problem with uh, solving that by myself and I looked around when this uh, movie was into cinemas and uh, people looked per perplexed as well. So 10 out of 10, no problems there, great storyline and relatively simple mathematics. Now definitely one of my favorite ones and really complex and controversial movie uh, called The Beautiful Mind, of course, starring Russell Crowe as a brilliant revolutionary mathematician and economist John Nash, um, directed by amazing Ron Howard. This is one of the best movies I ever saw in my life. But why is it controversial and uh, involves a lot of debates? Um, John Nash was actually not included in this movie, although he was alive at the time. Uh, especially he was not uh, consulted with, with specific topics. It also um, doesn't involve certain um, chapters from his own life, certain controversies, and uh, depicts uh, one um, extremely talented and gifted soul on the edge of schizophrenia. Now, the, the problem with the movie is that, um, as John Nash later said in his life, he, his first signs of schizophrenia actually happened after his studies, not at the university, as it is depicted in a movie. But uh, Ron Howard and screenwriters took certain freedom. But let's take a look at the math here. Adam Smith needs revision. 
What are you talking about? If we all go for the blonde. We block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. It's the only way we win. No. This is also a little bit controversial part, because John Nash is a mathematician, he completely revolutionized mathematics with his new field that he introduced called game theory. And now we use it everywhere and it helps us understand the world much better. And in this scene he tries to grasp a uh, concept of the theory that he's going to invent. The problem with this scene, although it's brilliant written, it's not particularly correct because it puts aside one of the most important concepts of, of uh, John Nash's theory and that is non-cooperative uh, uh, strategies in games. And what um, fictional character of John Nash here introduces is a cooperative game that is not really um, complex to, to solve, but this is not the very essence of what we're later going to call the Nash equilibrium. Um, I like what uh, screenwriters did here because it's easy for uh, humans and uh, average audience to understand and to grasp, but it's not uh, particularly correct because it involves uh, the notion or the idea that um, John Nash's colleagues in this scene will uh, comply with his proposition and that is not really what game theory is all about and what uh, Nash equilibrium is not all about. Of course we don't have time to uh, see or show or understand uh, how this scene would be correct. Maybe we can analyze it in depth in some of the next episodes. But let's take a look at some more scenes from this movie. Wow, uh, this is brilliant and beautiful and sad on so many levels and I think this is one of the most important math scenes in the whole cinema and the reason for that is because it really shows um, how certain mental illnesses and great mathematical and scientific discoveries uh, go kind of hand in hand or how thin is the line between complete madness and, and great discovery especially in mathematics because you can work for months, uh, years or even decades on certain problems trying to see maybe certain patterns that are not necessarily there and um, if you don't find them then you, you're called crazy but if you find something that you're called the genius for the rest of your life uh, obviously when you do uh, or when you work on certain problems like that nobody uh, can tell you are you genius or a madman and uh, usually it's it's the latter uh, this movie portrays that really well I'm not surprised that uh, Ron Howard as director uh, he and Russell Crowe did like a brilliant job of uh, putting this really important um, story onto a screen and explaining that to the audience so it's not surprised that uh, this movie won four Academy Awards, especially for directing and, uh, you know, best picture of, of the year. Uh, let me conclude uh, this story here. We reviewed four movies. There are hundreds more than we can do. If you like this, please let me know in the comments down below which are some of your favorite mathematical scenes and movies. Do you want me to review something next? What are your favorite science movies? Um, maybe we can turn this into some sort of uh, series, like it was done on some other channels. Until next week, stay tuned and curious, and don't forget, libraries still exist.